Professor Owadia, you're welcome to this segment of the show. Thank you so much. Okay, can you give us an insight into what CPN mandate is all about? CPN okay. means uh, Computer Professionals Registration Council of Nigeria. Okay. Uh, it derives its existence from uh, Act 49 of 1993. And uh, the idea behind CPN is to have uh, a council that will bring some uh, order, some sanity into the computing profession. You know, computing relative to other professions. It's a new profession. And at that point, it was felt that it was becoming an all commerce affairs. So there was need for some standards, need for some control, need for some monitoring, so that we could actually have um, computing operating like the other professions, like medicine, like uh, accountancy, like pharmacy. That's the idea behind the CPN. Yeah, the, um, the Computer Professional Registration Council of Nigeria is 25 years, this year 2018. And yes, you've been the president for more than a year now. What are your plans for the agency? And what is this unique thing you're bringing to the table? Well, uh, I won't say anything spectacularly new. Um, you know, we operate by act, so <laughs> we can't do any, anything outside the act. Uh, but of course, uh, one thing which uh, has always been clear to us in the profession is that CPN is not too known mm. outside. Okay. Exactly. So we, we've taken visibility to be very, very important. We've taken visibility quite seriously. So in, in the last couple of months, we've made every effort to reach out to spaces where CPN really wasn't operating before. We were able to have a forum that brought together CEOs of companies. Okay. We did that in November. And even the chairman at that forum told us that he had never heard about CPN mm -hmm. until we invited him. That's uh, Mr. Dotun Sulaiman. We just held a forum for media executives, okay, so, and we have two other fora. We're going to have a forum for MDAs, and then we're going to have a forum for IT teachers, okay. So, all these are geared, they are calculated towards increasing the visibility of CPN. Okay, talking about the underserved areas, what is CPN doing to develop these places? Because the schools are lagging infrastructure and quality education. That is not just for CPN. That's not a task for CPN alone. Okay, CPN has a role in developing standards of education at all levels monitoring those standards, okay, ensuring those standards are met. Now, in terms of actually putting infrastructure in place, you have other levels of government to do that. The, the schools themselves, the local governments have rules, the states have rules. You know, education is in the concurrent list. Even federal government for unity schools, the federal government also has a rule. So, our own role will be to ensure that the standards of education at that level, or for those understaffed, is quite good, is good enough. How about the students of computer science who still find it difficult to apply what they were taught in schools? Is it that the enterprise aspect is not being taught, or what actually is the issue here? It's a number of factors. Okay. First, the factor of the students and the parents and guardian. That's one. Okay. Two, the learning environment. That's where the government and other people come in. Mm -hmm. And then the teachers themselves, 
Okay, that's where we come in. Okay. And we are going to have a forum. We are still working on the details. Within the next couple of weeks, that would assemble all IT teachers. Okay, and find out what the challenges are. Because people complain to us, your graduates are not usable in the industry. Okay, so let's put all IT teachers together and put across to them the complaints from the industry. It's not all graduates, by the way, you know. I mean, some graduates go out there and they excel. Some go out of the country and they do well. Exactly. But a critical number not doing too well enough, what is the reason? Or what are the reasons? Some of them we know. But we want to hear from those who are, you know, yeah. on, on ground, those, those who are really facing the issues. What, what, what are the issues they have with the students? Why are they not impacting what the industry needs? Okay? Uh, to the students. So I think that forum will be able to crystallize maybe some of the things we know and some that we don't know. Local content um, remains a sing song in Nigeria. How do we translate this to real economic gains with the ICT sector? Well, the first thing is that the policy must be there. And I, I think government seems to be summoning the willpower now. Put, so the policy is being put in place. Now it's not just about policy. Once you have about policy, once you have a policy, there must also be the will to see it through in implementation. I'll give you an example. Local content says, "Don't import a payroll software if you can find." a commercial software here in Nigeria. That's an example. That's a policy. But somebody could just wake up to say, look, the payroll I want, I cannot find anything close to it in Nigeria. So I want to go import my payroll software from India. You know, that's a problem. Exactly. So our own job, we are actually we want to work with other, other MDs to ensure that we, we, we close such loopholes. The loopholes that allow, that doesn't allow the local content policy to be fully implemented. Yeah, so many unregistered schools, computer learning institutes. What is CPN doing to stop all of, all of this? That's one area that we've not really been able to muster resources to handle, quite frankly. It's a huge area. It requires resources because we are talking about enforcement. We are talking about computer schools across the country. And what it entails is first, Identify those companies or schools where they are. Two, asking them to come and register and subject their programs to accreditation. Three, where they fail to accredit, serving them notice of closure. Four, move to the next stage of closing them down with law enforcement agencies. I hope you can see that process. It's a long <laughs> exactly. So what we are trying to do, this, this stage where we are now, where it, that has been an ongoing stage, is to ensure that we even find out where they are located, OK? And then ask them to come register. And some of them are actually coming, OK? But it's not all. So we actually want to move quickly towards the other stages. And just uh, about a month ago, we had uh, an interaction with uh, our lawyer, okay. that's a CPN lawyer, on what to do about uh, this. I think we are still in the process of doing that. Yeah, thank you so much for your time, Prof. But before I let you off the hook, 
what is CPN projection in the, in the next few years? My projection is that CPN should be known by everybody who intends or who is already practicing IT. Even students who are intending to graduate, they know what CPN is about. That is not the case today. That's, that's my intention. Thank you very much for your time, Professor Owadia.